In this video, I'm going to show how to share our new project in IntelliJ IDEA on GitHub. There are many reasons why we like Git, GitHub, and distributed version control. Number one, it's a backup of our work, our source code. And with that, we get to see a history of changes, and we can go back to that history of changes at any point in time. It helps us collaborate with others. It also adds some value-added tools like GitHub projects to manage our work and CICD pipelines. Additionally, it gives us the capability to do feature branches, which allows us to manage our features and manage our releases alike. And finally, it's very important for you because it's a way to build a portfolio of your work that's publicly accessible so you can show off your work. So a couple prerequisites. First of all, we have to make sure we have a GitHub account, which I'm not going to cover here. I'll let you handle that on your own. Secondly, we need to make sure that git.exe is installed on our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and download this and install this if it hasn't been done before. And of course, we'll read the entire license in great depth. And if we're sure that we're ready to accept, we'll go ahead and say next. Uh, see, program files git is fine, or I could take it all the way back to just C drive if I want. That'll be fine. Uh, and next, and next, and next. And we'll continue through the prompts naturally. Most of this we're going to handle through our IDE anyway, so we'll go ahead and install. Now while this is installing, one other thing I want to take a look at. If we look at our project, uh, we see out on root there's this file called .gitignore, and this is a very important file that we want to think about when we're thinking about distributed version control. Because this file says, okay, here are the things that I do not want to push to version control. Indeed, there are a lot of reasons why we might not want to push something to version control. Either a file might have an absolute path for our computer that only is relevant for our computer, or there might be some sensitive information, or it might just be a compiled file, and we don't tend to push compiled files to version control because we know we could always simply rebuild. So the gitignore file here was provided for us by default, but if we don't have that default gitignore file, what can we do? Well, luckily, there's an easy approach. We simply go to gitignore.io, and you can type in what your project is using. Maybe Java, or we can say Java Web in this case, Maven for our project, and also IntelliJ. And that's what I'm using on this project. When I hit Create, it will give me a default gitignore file with quite a few entries. So what I can do is I can either use the default one that was given to me by IntelliJ by this project, or I can simply copy and paste in this gitignore that was generated for me, or I could do some combination of the two. I could look and see where they overlap and make a unique merge of these two different files. For my purposes, I'll go ahead, I'll just keep it as it is right now, but I know I can always go back and reference this other gitignore and pull in other things as needed later. Okay, that being said, let's take a look. It looks like uh, we finished installing git. Uh, so once to open the readme, we'll let that go ahead and go. Meanwhile, we'll jump back here to IntelliJ. So if I right click on the project, you'll notice that we don't have a Git option here, which we normally have after we've already shared our project. So we need to share our project. So I'm going to go to VCS, and then I'm going to say import into version control, and we'll say share project on GitHub. If you've already logged into GitHub from this computer, uh, it'll take you right in here to the share project option. If you've not logged in before, it will prompt you for your GitHub login. Now, I remember I gave this a relatively long name. We'll call it Spring Boot Microservice with IntelliJ IDEA. There's so much opportunity to mistype that. I paused the video, so I went ahead and typed it uh, like so. Now we'll choose share. Now after I share it, you see it, it gives me the add files to Git option. So I can take a look here and look for anything that I want to exclude or anything that I want to add. We'll go ahead and stick with initial commit and say add. The vast majority of the time, that's all you need to do. You've committed and pushed. And now you can go to GitHub, go to the repository and look at the commit history to confirm that your changes have made it to GitHub. But occasionally, if it's the first time you've installed IntelliJ IDEA on a new computer and it's the first time you've installed Git as well, you might see this error come up. Can't finish GitHub sharing process. Successfully created the project, but initial commit failed. Please tell me who you are. If you received this error, stay tuned. I will show you how to resolve it. 
If you didn't receive this error and you see everything's committed and pushed, you're in good shape, and I thank you for watching the video. So to fix this, we simply go to the terminal window, which you can also find by going to the view, and then tool windows, and then terminal. If you don't see it down at the bottom, uh, you can grab it here just as well, or Alt F12 will work. Now from here, we simply follow the instructions that it's told us. So let's let's type in git space config space dash dash global user dot name equals, and I'll go ahead and put my name in for this, or sorry, user dot name space, and then Brandon space Jones for me, and enter. And now we need to give it an email as well. So we will say git config, this time instead of global username, we'll say global user email. And then we'll say, uh, in my case, brandan.jones at uc.edu and enter. Now with that done, let's try and make a commit and push as well. So right click git and we'll go ahead and do a commit directory. And we see quite a few things here. So I'll just say initial commit and Click the little drop down here, we'll do commit and push. And we'll go ahead and commit and push and push. Now we can go to GitHub in a browser and we can see that sure enough, we have one commit that was done fairly recently. And if we take a look at the commit, uh, we can see all the files that were pushed as part of the commit. So in this video, we've successfully fixed the error. Please tell me who you are. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.